Hey everybody, this is Steve, and I wonder, what story are you a part of? When I was a kid, I remember learning how to play chess. It was confusing at first. There were all these oddly shaped pieces that could each make only particular kinds of moves. But the more I played, the more it made sense. The game made sense in light of the bigger picture, in light of the story of chess. The rules of chess, or any other game, only make sense in the wider story of that game which in the case of chess starts with the board all set up and ends with the king being defeated. And as I was talking to my buddy Christian, who's the host of The Trench, we both realized that our lives work in a similar way. A game of chess is full of choices. Every move you need to choose which piece to play and how to play it. Just like every day you need to pick how to use your time or talents. The movements on a chessboard aren't random. They're part of the story of chess directed toward the end of the game of knocking out the king. That's what gives each move direction and meaning. The question we need to ask ourselves is, what is the direction of our lives? What story are we a part of? When I was a kid, my parents and grandparents stressed the importance of going to school and getting an education. My grandparents had difficult lives back in Greece and Cyprus, raising crops and animals, and they didn't want me to have to struggle with such back-breaking work. They wanted me to work with my head, not my hands. My particular story of going to college and then law school and then working at a law firm was embedded in this wider immigrant story of coming to the United States and seeking out a so-called better, that is to say, a more prosperous life. And each and every one of our lives is embedded in some larger narrative of our families, of our neighborhoods, of our countries. Just like Sam and Frodo realize as they're walking to Mount Doom to destroy the ring, our adventures are just chapters in a greater tale. When we think of the story that we've been written into, that's been inscribed on our hearts, that's been embedded in our imaginations, we realize we're characters in that story. When we are younger, there are many narratives told to us and for us about who we are. These stories help guide what we do and who we become. Yet as we get older, we get to decide what rules we choose to play by. We get to decide whether or not our grades or the school we go to or the job we get are the most important things about us. We get to decide if our story is one of wealth or status or something greater. Think about it for a minute. Who have you been cast as in your story? Are you the all-star team captain or the Greek American or the top of your class? Are you the disciple of Christ? What story are you a part of? because there's another story out there, one we might be overlooking. It's a story that begins at the very beginning, when God created the world out of his indescribable love. A story that includes incredible prophets like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, flawed people that God calls to begin preparing the way for the coming of his son. It's a story that includes great miracles and wonders, countless times that God was present in the world and in the lives of his people. A story that comes together in the never-ending joy, peace, and life of the kingdom of God. Except it's not just a story, it's the story. It's God's story. The story of salvation. The story that explains why the world is here and where it's going, how things began and how things will end. Spoiler alert, Jesus wins. And if we look at things with the eyes of a bee, we'll see that God's story is really our story too. It's the reason Abraham packed up his entire life and moved when God approached him in Genesis. It's the reason Saint Bondelemon dedicated his life to healing people, not for money, but for the glory of God. It's the reason my daughter's patron, Saint Caritina, a teenager, decided to lay down her life for the Lord rather than turn her back on him. Each of these saints, in fact, all saints, chose to embed their story not in a narrative of fame or wealth or comfort, but in God's story, in the great story of salvation. And the same choice is available to us if we're willing to take part in the adventure. God is inviting us to see ourselves and our lives in light of his love and the gift of his kingdom so we can use our gifts for the life of the world to bring joy where there is suffering, community where there is loneliness, life where there's death. But to do that, we need to first decide what story we're a part of, God's or our own. So let's be the bee and find our story in the story 
of salvation. Be the bee and live orthodoxy. Remember to like and subscribe and share. I'll see you all next week. Thanks to our supporters on Patreon who helped make this episode possible. To support the creation of more Orthodox Christian content, please visit patreon.com slash y2am. And be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes of B2B and every Monday for new episodes of The Trench.